This video is brought to you by Blessed Be God Boutique, maker of Catholic fashionable apparel, handmade accessories, and more. The Vatican is losing money. Three years ago, the Catholic world became aware of the misuses of Peter's Pence funds and Ted McCarrick's ties to the Papal Foundation. If you can call them ties, he helped found the thing. Both of those things are financial arms used by the Vatican to raise money for, on paper, the work of the Pope. Missionary works, works of mercy, and that sort of thing, regardless of who is sitting on the Sea of Peter. And if they were being used for those purposes, none of us would probably have problems donating to those causes. But we've learned in the past few years that the funds are used for other purposes, including investing in real estate, funding Hollywood films, and other rather dubious investments. Now the word is that the Vatican is losing money year over year in these funds, and we are all left wondering, will they get the message? The faithful are making our voices heard with our wallets by not donating to them. And that might be the only language the modernists in Rome respect. So let's dive into the story. Those an aside, I do have a bonus audio-only thing for you. It's a letter addressed from Vigano to some law enforcement types. And it may be worth your time in general since it can be addressed to those enforcing the dictates of Caesar on all things related to the present situation. So needless to say, it's way too spicy for this place. I'll have it available on Spotify, Podbean, or any other audio platform that you find Return to Tradition on. Check the pinned comment for a direct link to Spotify. Again, check the pinned comment or look for a direct link at returntotradition.org in today's show notes. That all having been said, Francis the Wise One has some rather incredible words of wisdom for us today. As Americans enter tax season, where many of us wrestle with the fact that we will have to cut Uncle Sam a check for services not rendered through our tax bill, myself included, we have to ask ourselves, is paying this thing even an act of justice? Some will say yes, others no, and even Francis has chimed in on this in a perfectly timed statement. From Mesa and Latino, we get this. Headline, Francesco, in the name of the Father and of the tax authorities. As you can see, Paca Papa Francis, who never saw a government partnership that he didn't approve of, is suggesting a religious duty to pay Caesar his silver regardless of how much he asks for. And, you know, there's a certain element of truth into that, render under, unto Caesar, after all. But let's see what he has to say for himself. From the article, quote, Pope Francis has been able to surprise us on more than one occasion, and we are now used to blessings of all kinds. This time it was the turn of taxes, fees and taxes. Yesterday in the Vatican, a delegation from the Revenue Agency, led by the Director General Ernesto Maria Ruffini, revealed itself. You will say they will have gone to recover the arrears of the ICI. But no, the Fiamme Gialli were there for an audience with the pontiff, who appeased them on the goodness of their work. The tax man is seen as putting people's hands in their pockets, Bergoglio said. In reality, taxation is a sign of legality and justice. It must favor the redistribution of wealth protecting the dignity of the poor and the least, who always risk being crushed by the powerful. The tax, when it is right, is a function of the common good. Now everything is fine, but Bergoglio, before summoning Ruffini and friends, should perhaps have taken a look at the Italian tax system, because there is very little of right in paying the state a donation, not that of St. Peter's, that travels around 50% of what is produced. All of this, however, without getting almost anything back. Services, health, safety, public transport, nothing in Italy is up to the annual income tax. Think of the Roman buses catching fire, or the waiting lists in care facilities, or even the fact that at the beginning of the present situation, Italy found itself having far fewer available spaces, far fewer per million inhabitants, than those that Germany had provided for its citizens. And if Bergoglio knew that in 2021 we spent a large share of 8.8 .8 billion euros of taxpayer funding, to keep bold young people on the couch with citizenship income, well, perhaps more than redistribution of wealth would have spoken of aggravated theft, end quote. And that is a translation from Italian, so, but I think you get the idea. That's reassuring. The church has never endorsed these state-based redistribution programs, though it has also never really opposed government programs to aid the poor. The social teaching of the church has never fit e neatly into one political program or another. Now that's a discussion for another time, but surely it's obvious here that Francis is embracing the errors condemned by all the preconciliar popes when they worked against various forms of collectivism and the new rising tide of powerful secular government demanding to take possession of private property in the name of justice. But Francis has long been playing kissy face with the proponents of liberation theology, so none of this is really surprising in any way.
The only surprising thing about this is the timing of the statement, which comes at a time when it is being widely reported that the laity are just not donating to the key Vatican fundraising programs anymore. From ReligionNews.com Vatican braces for 2022 deficit as donations drop in wake of financial scandal. The Vatican has struggled to attract donations due to financial scandals that have led to a loss of credibility among faithful. What are the scandals they speak of here? You remember Cardinal Betchew and all the related things to that. 2020 and 2021 were full of these stories, and I hinted at them at the start of this episode. Just remember, this is all set against the backdrop of the Synod of Synodality and the effort by the heretics in Rome to remake the Catholic Church in their own neo-Protestant image. From the article, quote, Donations to the Holy See are expected to continue to drop following financial scandals currently at the heart of a high-profile Vatican trial. The institution is tackling an expected deficit of $37 million, according to its 2022 budget projection published Friday, January 28th. The Vatican expects to have an income of $857.1 million and expenditures of $894 million in 2022. Efforts to cut costs in the department and offices that make up the Roman Curia have led to a reduction of its expenditures by about $4.5 million. The present never-ending situation in the world negatively impacted the institution's finances, which largely depend on foreign tourists visiting the Vatican museums. But financial scandals surrounding the purchase of a costly property in London using a fund destined for charity, known as Peter's Pence, has undermined the Vatican's credibility and cost it millions of dollars. End quote. Ah yes, the Vatican is blaming the present situation and not a withering faith in the lives of many Western Catholics and a loss of trust from those who hold the faith due to endless Vatican malfeasance. It's rather typical. We should expect nothing less from this lot of modernists. After all, they went full bore in with Caesar's demands regarding the present situation, and now they're reaping the whirlwind. They really are trying to put much of this on the present situation that will never end. I mean, take a look at this. Quote, The London property purchase is at the center of the ongoing Vatican trial of ten individuals, including Cardinal Angelo Becciu, who are charged with, among other things, abuse of power, corruption, and money laundering. The Vatican will publish a report on Peter's Pence in the coming months, but donations are expected to have decreased by 15% in 2021, said Juan Antonio Guerrero Alves, head of the Vatican Secretariat for the Economy, in an interview with Vatican Media published alongside the 2022 budget. Donations to Peter's Pence in 2021 decreased to barely over $41 million, wow, following a downward trend that can be traced to before the onslaught of the present situation, which has negatively impacted donations due to reduced mass attendance. Guerrero acknowledged that the real issue is restoring the reputation of the church among the faithful by increasing transparency and enacting modern accounting regulations. We are all aware that we have made major mistakes in financial management, which have undermined the credibility of the Holy See, Guerrero said. We seek to learn from them, and we believe we have remedied them so that they do not happen again. End quote. Something not mentioned here that should be mentioned. Do you remember Cardinal Pell and how he was exonerated last year? He had some interesting questions for Betchew a few months ago. In December of 2021, Cardinal Pell asked rhetorically Cardinal Betchew during Betchew's trial this rather pointed question. Headline from the Catholic News Agency. Cardinal Pell to Betchew. What was that two million payment actually for? Here, Pell was referring to a mysterious transfer of $2 million to Australia that no one can account for, and it really illustrates why no one wants to donate to Rome. From the story, quote, We have one basic unanswered question, Pell told CNA in a phone interview. We do know, this has been confirmed by Cardinal Angelo Becciu, that $2,300,000 Australian was sent from the Vatican Secretary of State to Australia. Monsignor Alberto Perlasca, a former senior official at the Vatican's Secretariat of State, has said that the funds were sent to the Australian Conference of Bishops for Pell's expenses during his trial and imprisonment. The Australian Conference of Bishops, however, disputes this claim and says it did not receive the money. The Conference of Bishops has said no such money ever arrived, and certainly we didn't receive it, said Pell. So the unanswered question is, if the money wasn't sent for something to do with my case, why was it sent? Pell said that if a good reason can be given for why the funds were sent to Australia, then we can get on with our life and investigate other directions. But it's a major unanswered question. And as I said, Cardinal Betchew confirms that the money was sent, and it believes it was none of my business as to why it was sent. The Cardinal was unable to explain why Betchew would characterize money purportedly sent for his expenses as none of his business. Pell said it would be very nice to resolve the matter of the funds being transferred to Australia and is seeking any answer at all. End quote. Between that, 
shady real estate deals and questionable film projects, it's little wonder that no one wants to donate to Peters, Pence, and related fundraising projects. There simply is no trust there anymore. Are you still donating to Rome? If so, why? Why not just donate directly to a seminarian or religious order fund or to your parish's food box program or anything else church-related that's just much more transparent? Let me know in the comments, please, because I am genuinely curious about this. But this all brings me back to the original article. The Vatican is reporting that they are being bogged down by new management standards imposed by Francis in the name of transparency, all of which have been designed to make whatever funds are used for more transparent in how they're used. And if that's honestly their purpose of the things that Francis did on this, that's, that's fine. Except it has resulted in new bureaucratic structures being put into place, which, you guessed it, both slow down the process of daily work and, of course, cost money. But in addition to a bigger Roman curia to solve this credibility problem, the Vatican has another solution. You can donate more money to them. You can't just make this up, after all. Speaking on behalf of Rome, according to Father Juan Guerrero, S.J., yes, he's a Jesuit, the Vatican's chief economic manager, quote, We also need to look for ways to attract more donations. The first requirement is transparency and clear accountability, and I think we have taken away many steps in this direct direction, he said. Guerrero said local churches throughout the world will also have to pitch in to help the Roman Curia, which supports and manages charitable activities and papal ambassadors. The 2022 expected budget shows that most of the Vatican's resources are used to sustain struggling churches, about 21%, promoting the Vatican's mis mission and message, 16%, preserving its global presence, 16%, supporting evangelization efforts, 16%, and enacting charitable works, 9%. The Vatican must enlist the help of the faithful who want to support the Pope in his mission of unity and charity, which is, after all, what the Roman Curia does, Guerrero said, adding that the publication of these reports might appease Catholic donors who can now see how their money is spent. End quote. I'm sure that we're all going to answer the call to fund an operation that is currently waging war against the deposit of the faith. I know I can't wait to finance the people trying to destroy the faith and force me to engage in worship that will probably result in my kids not being in the church anymore. But let me know what you think of all this. Are they really this clueless or is there something else going on? It looks to me like they haven't learned a single lesson from the past few years in the church and that things will only get worse until they face reality. That we want the same faith as our forebears. And we want a Vatican run by honest people. We want nothing to do with their false universal church of man. Give us the faith and then maybe we'll talk about how to do these charitable works. That's my thought on all of this, though. What do you think? Let me know in the comments, please. And like and subscribe if you haven't. It really does help. And remember to check out the bonus content linked in the pinned comment below. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.